This is a quick tutorial on how to wrap a logo around a photographed object. Let's say you're working on a new product packaging job. Here is a way to create quick realistic prototypes of how your label design is going to look when wrapped onto the finished product. The process is fairly easy once you understand the technique and can be used for some pretty remarkable results. So this is what we're going to end up in the end of this project. I'm going to delete my two layers right here and we can start from scratch. Alright, the first step in this process actually happened well before we got into Photoshop. One of the tricks in this technique is we are actually taking two photos of this particular product. Early on, before we actually went in for our, for our photo shoot, I printed out, I created a grid pattern in Illustrator, and I printed it out on our laser printer, trimmed it out, and we have two shots of our particular bottle. One shot with just the bottle by itself, and the other shot with this grid pattern adhered to the bottle and shot in the same angle and position as everything else. Now, the bottle with the grid adhered to it is just a reference point. We're not going to end up using this in the final layout, but it's going to help us arrange everything so that we can warp exactly around the shape of the bottle and uh, get our image looking very realistic. Now that we have the photo with the printed grid adhered to it, I'm actually going to place the electronic file that grid came from. You know, so we've got a file here called Label Grid. This is actually the Illustrator file that we printed in order to get this grid. So it's right here. You know, it's got the same number of boxes. This is exactly the file that we use to print this. Now, what I want to do is I want to warp this image so it matches our reference example. Normally I'd go under Edit and I could pull down to Transform and pull down to Warp. However, there's an extra step we need to add. We've placed this Illustrator, it's automatically created as a smart object, but we can't actually warp it until we do something kind of unique. We actually have to go under Layer and group it into a new smart object. There's just an extra step, it's a required step in order to make this work. Nothing really changed on the screen, except now, if we go down to Transform, Warp is available. So before I warp it, I'm actually going to do a free transform, and I'm going to size this down just to save myself a little bit of time. So I'm doing as little warping as needed. And I'm going to try to line this up really quickly so that at least one side of it is somewhat close. I'm not trying to be ex exact, but you can see how I'm transforming this. And now I'm going to go back under Edit, Transform, Warp. And here's the really cool part. I'm going to grab my corners, and I'm going to line the corners up first, and I'm actually warping this placed grid so it matches our reference point. And I'm grabbing my little curves here. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to adjust my endpoints of this grid so it all matches up. And it's going to take a little bit. You've got to watch me flounder around a little bit. And we are going to try to line up all of our edges so that our red overlaid grid matches that black grid precisely. Now there are some really talented people that can do this type of thing without the reference grid. I actually can't. I'm not, I'm not talented enough to really be able to recreate this, this uh, warp in three dimensions to really get a realistic looking image. So I'm cheating. I'm using a printed reference point. And you see I've lined up my edges. And I'm going to start grabbing this grid on the interior and see if I can start lining it up. And I'm just grabbing these corner points. And we're just warping on the inside. And I'm just going to keep playing with this a little bit off and on until we get it lined up pretty exactly. I'm doing this live, so I think this will probably be close enough. Let me take a really quick look, see if there's anything else I want to touch up here. Let's see, or maybe right there a little bit. Okay. You can take as long on this as you want to. I think I'm going to have to call that good, so I'm going to apply that change. Now, if you look, no, it looks like I've got a little bit missing up here, but I think it'll be close enough for a demonstration. I have overlaid this label grid, which is a placed illustrator graphic, right on top of my black grid that is actually printed and adhered to the actual product. So once I've gotten this taken care of, you know what, I'm going to just clean this up. I don't want to let that go. Let me just do a really quick little touch up on a couple of these pieces. Okay, that's a little bit better. Now that we've got the, the overlay already warped and on place, I am going to turn off our reference image. We no longer need this. We don't need this photo that we took of the bottle with the grid adhered to it. That was just a reference point. What we've got now is we have this smart object, which I'm opening up here, actually placed and warped into position on top of our bottle, which is going to lead us to our next step. Okay, now the fun part. Let's reopen our smart object, our label grid smart object. 
This will open up in a separate window. And now we're actually going to place our logo or our label graphic right into that. So place. We've got one called Label Art. And let's apply it. This is a little fictitious label for Creative Text, our company. And we can line this up using the grid as a reference point. Now normally I would make my grid invisible at this point, but I just want to close this up so you can see what happens. Click Save. And it, the, the uh, smart object has automatically adjusted and warped. The whole smart object is warped into position, so anything we place into that smart object is automatically warped right onto the bottle. Go back in here, and I can actually go over to the layers for the smart object, and I'm going to turn off the label grid layer, close this up, save changes, and there we go. Our placed Illustrator graphic has now been warped right onto the bottle. Now, there's only a few little details to really make this kind of look a little more realistic. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place a, a graphic that I've gotten ready before, a shadow graphic, where I actually pulled out some of the shadow elements. And this is just a shadow detail for this particular bottle. I'm going to set this to multiply. And then I'm going to hold down my Option key, and I'm going to click between these two layers. And what that's going to do, it is going to trim our shadows just within the transparency of our label grid. So let me turn the shadow layer on and off a few times. You can see how that just is going to add a little bit of shadowing in, just to give a little bit of dimension to make that look like a little bit more realistic label. And there we go. We have a fairly realistic label done very quickly and just placed in. Now, we could call ourselves done, but let's explore some of the real magic of using smart objects. We're going to go back in, double click on the smart object, and there is our, you know, there's our grid that we, we adjusted. Now, we placed an Illustrator graphic called Label Art. This actually is another smart object embedded in our first smart object. If I double click on this, we switch over to Illustrator and we can actually edit this. So in this case, I'm just going to edit it just a little bit. I am going to drag it down, make it a little bit longer. Close that up. And it should update here. There we go, make it a little bit longer. And I'm going to place in another graphic that I've already got ready here. We use your iPod bug. So, our little product now supports iPods. Just a little burst. By the way, I am not I am a left brain support guy for graphic designers. I am not a designer myself. Um, so hey, please excuse the look. Click OK. And this automatically updates and our whole label is adjusted. Basically, once you've got this in place, we can go in here and pretty much edit to, to our heart's content whatever we want to do in this. I could get rid of this particular piece, turn that off, adjust elements, adjust the way it looks, and every time I apply my changes, it updates right live on our little placed graphic. So there you go. Wrapping a logo and label around a three-dimensional object that you photographed yourself. I hope this is fun to play with.